So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to simulate a, a job on the laser so that you can actually see the laser bridge move, stop, and you can time out the function. So grab your stopwatch and that way we can make a comparison between the NGL and what's involved. So the advantage to the bridge is that laser with embroidery is unbelievable. You can do what no hand can do. There's undeniably no uh, issues with regards to the technology. Anybody and everybody in the world who's purchased a bridge laser, regardless from who, has saved their hide in this worldwide economic crisis. It's basically given the ability and, uh, to do things that 95% of the rest of the embroidery world can't do. And the NGL laser, the purpose is to give you access without having to spend 200 grand. It's almost better to have two lasers of NGL you have redundancy if you ever would have an issue. If you have a $200,000 machine, the vast majority of people don't have a second one. And when it goes down, they're always getting involved with the techs from, fact, from uh, Italy. It's like a Ferrari in that respect. They come from the same region, they're built with the same mindset, a lot of the same people working between the companies. And there's a lot of what I call like the incestuous intellectual theft. And they're very similar in principle. And as a company, it was a distributor, we just had to find a way to sell a machine, make a machine like the rhinestone robot or like the embossing where we don't have technicians traveling all over the country. We're fed up with that. And the NGL is plug and play. The NGL is something that any embroidery tech in your city by getting us on the phone could actually do a service, a maintenance or whatever. It's designed that way, the manuals are that way and the manuals are first and foremost in English, then in Spanish, not in Italian and then maybe all those uh, Italian English words, etc. So there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, also, by the way, because it's made, uh, assembled in Canada and mostly with U.S. parts, it's completely NAFTA friendly, North American free trade, so you don't have the heavy duty duties on the equipment when stuff is imported. So uh, I'm going to press enter and we're going to follow a laser and I'll explain what's going on. <clears throat> so the laser travels to its position. I can't go too close because there's a, a, a laser curtain there that's uh, visually preventing anybody from getting uh, in the way of the laser. And uh, the hood went down, the fan turned on, and then the hood went up, moved to the next position, goes down, and then internally the laser would be firing. So now it would be doing its three or four or five, whatever passes, whatever parameters were set, it would be cutting. And then the hood will lift up. There's always a delay to collect smoke because when the laser moves, there's still smoke remaining. And that's why with the bridge laser, there tends to be some smoke in the room unless you put in a delay that's long enough to capture it. With the NGL, that's not the case at all. So hopefully you had your timer running <clears throat> and you'll see that you know, there's a 5, 7, 8, 10, 20 second. Depends on what you're cutting, how many layers you're cutting, how many passes you have. There's a strategy and that takes time. But in the meantime, your embroidery machine is not uh, doing anything. It's waiting for the laser to cut. Technically, you'd see that the girls would be going or the guys would be pulling off the excess material from the other hoops and moving it uh, down along the line. So you can't get too close to it because of the safety curtain. And that red light up top is indicating that the laser is working and firing. So that's basically the process. It's going to go to the home position right now. And then that home position is a test table so you can find out the parameters. What we've done with the NGL software is we have pre-programmed all tackle twills in there from you know, stalls and SM Cristal, etc. So they're, the, the settings are already pre-programmed. You just call them up and you tell it what color it is. That's very easy and you can add to the library. There's no other software that has that. Just a little bit of creativity. So now you could basically pull off your hoops or you could, if you're done on one layer, you're finished completely, it goes to the cleaning station. Otherwise, you pull off the excess material and put down your second layer if that's what you're up to. So that's the process with regards to the bridge. What we do with the NGL is we would simply collect each one of the hoops and the embroidery machine would be free and we put it on a table beside the NGL and somebody would fire off on the hoops as they position them in, clip them in and your embroidery machine's free. The big huge advantage to the NGL laser is that with the bridge I'm limited to the machine that's underneath the bridge. So if I have a longer bridge and I have two six heads, three six heads, four six heads, twelve head, whatever, those are the only ones that apply to the laser. And typically everybody uh, who's buying a bridge has, you know, 50, 60 heads plus. So 
they still don't have access and the NGL would give you access to every single uh, embroidery head that you have on your floor and like I said if you have a C shape if you look at the FAQs at permabosslaser.com you'll see we can have two machines and the NGL or we can have three machines and the NGL so everybody can take the hoops straight to the NGL so I'll pause it here again I'm gonna go straight over to the uh, Wall of Fame back uh, this is the Wall of Fame. These are just a couple of examples where I want to walk you through the strategy on how to laser and what we did. So I'm going to go up to the top left mark, work my way across. This logo is a Microsoft logo. There's a polar fleece that has a foam underneath to give it a 3D loft and it has the four pieces of tackle twill. What we did here was we simply put the foam down, running stitch and cut it, then we put the fleece on top, we did a running stitch, then the laser cut it, pulled away the excess, and then we lay down our four colors, a big square. So it's basically one layer underneath, two, three, four, five, six layer design, but it's 3D. This you could technically do without a laser, but it would never be totally symmetrical, and it would be difficult to get the placement right because it's lofty and it's 3D. So that's what we're able to do relatively quickly with the laser. Here's an example, this is all tackle twill, and when we use all tackle twill, we don't necessarily have to use foil. The strategy is that with tackle twill, the laser light won't go through. Can you grab me a piece of tackle twill? And uh, with the tackle twill, we will cut, let's say, 98, 99%, almost like it's perforated, and then we can pull off the excess. So notice that it's impossible to do this in a stitch count, it would kill you. Most of these designs are like that. And uh, we did a black layer first, then we threw the yellow on top, and then we did the running stitch of the yellow, the laser cuts, we throw away the excess, and then we put the white layer on top. So it's basically a three color design. The letters are the things that become hard to do, or anything that's narrow and a, has the border, because it's like dealing with a wet noodle when you're dealing with fabric or textiles. So here's a piece of tackle twill. Remember that example I gave you? I've got a, a laser pointer here, if you can see that in the video. And if I shine this through, there's no real laser dot coming through when I shine this. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it. But if I grab my t-shirt, for example, you can see the laser dot come right through the t-shirt. Okay, the t-shirt is because it's woven. So remember that it's woven and there's light being able to go through. The laser pointer I'm using from the dollar store is many times thicker than the cutting laser we use on any one of the bridge lasers or the NGL. So with tackle twill, I can avoid using the foil in that particular case, but when I use anything that's typically uh, natural, it has fiber, I need to use the foil. This is felt. So there's the uh, only thing that's here is satin stitch. That's the highest stitch count. The rest is simply um, felt. And look at these letters. I mean, they're barely three quarters of an inch tall, and look how many they are. Impossible to do unless you had the bridge laser or the NGL. And the way you do it is you lay down a white layer, you do your running stitch, and then all of a sudden it would cut around the running stitch and you would pull away the excess, throw it away. And then we put on the, uh, the gold and then we put one more layer of white on top. And this has a nice loft to it if, you, um, if I take a picture separately. Dodge Ram, really simple, but it's big. Okay, so you have a full front decoration, but you're using a couple cents worth of tackle twill to do it, and you're basically doing it in a running stitch, so you're doing a full front design, you're doing it in one color, but you're doing it in seconds. If you had to satin stitch this out, you'd be in the neighborhood of maybe 60,000, 50,000 stitches to do a really nice job, and here you're barely at, you know, 3,000 stitches in total at best. And all we did was one black layer, laser cut it, it's tackle twill, it's black, so it's like perfect, you can cut 98, 99% of the way through. Do your running stitch, laser cut, pull away the excess, the whole thing's done. There's virtually no weeding or no cleaning. This baby, look at the size of it, it's 250 by 250 mil millimeters, which is the 10.8 inches, okay? So a full front design, three layers. Really big amount of tackle twill in green, one running stitch, and weed out the rest. Then we put on the white layer. Look at the little quarter inch. It's just a little less than a quarter inch, a uh, bit more than an eighth of an inch. And look at these lines here. They're individual pieces here. Impossible to do unless you have a laser on your embroidery machine. This stuff is what you make a living with. Do you understand that people are charging 750 for one color, 
and on average in the states they're getting ten dollars to fourteen dollars for a design like this and this takes a matter of you know uh, twelve minutes absolute total times six heads or whatever you have that's way better than the industry standard of forty two dollars an hour for a embroidery that's like poverty for a business when you have your overhead your staff your payroll forty two dollars an hour covers nothing you're you should be making with a laser well in excess of $100, $120, $130 an hour, if not more, depending upon the volume that you're doing. So I'm going to move back over here.